Hello, it's Who Knows When. Have you ever worked on a song and noticed, hmm, I've been working on this track for five hours and gotten, uh, basically wondering why it takes you so long to produce music. In that case, it could be you're spending too much time thinking about what settings to use for the fourth parallel compression on the snare and not enough time thinking about workflow. Workflow, i.e. not what you do, but how you do it, is something that's not very fancy or exciting, but it will bring you so much value as a producer. The core principle of a good workflow is to be able to make music faster. So today we're gonna to be looking at what you can do to get a better workflow as a music producer. Also, this video is gonna contain some more broader tips and tricks to keep it accessible across DAWs, as opposed to really specific FL studio tips, which you can find all across YouTube anyways. Now me personally, I like to keep in mind why we do things instead of just what to do or how to do it. So what are we trying to do when we wanna get a better workflow? Essentially, you wanna focus as much of your time creating a dankest face for your deep house track and less time trying to find that one snare sample that's way deep in your sample library somewhere. Like it sounds really good, bro. Trust me, I just gotta just um, just give me a second, I just gotta find it real quick. When you create music, you wanna cut down the time of repetitive actions as much as possible in order to give you more room to do the things that matter, creating a dank face for your deep house track. The first concept I wanna have a look at to improve workflow is navigation, namely how quickly you can get around in your software. Thinking about the process of going from the channel rack to the mixer or the browser to the playlist in FL Studio seems about as interesting as discussing overcast weather. And oh, did you hear my rain tomorrow? Oh no. I know. Think about how many times you do that over the course of making a song. A lot of time could be saved. Finding quicker ways of navigating around your DAW could save you loads of time when making another garbage beat. And the first and most obvious step to improving navigation is utilizing keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts are pure magic when you get used to them as they allow you to go and do so many things instantaneously as opposed to, uh, In FL Studio, the shortcuts I use the most are the function keys that can switch between the mixer, channel rack, and playlist seamlessly. And like loads of other stuff as well. And general hotkeys like Control R for rendering, Alt B, Alt C, and Alt T in the playlist, and many others. Think of keyboard shortcuts like Formula One. The difference between two instances might only be a tenth of a second, but over a 23 race season, it'll make all the difference. I feel like that wasn't a very good analogy. The second tip to help you navigate projects quicker is to make a template project. When you're making a beat, there are a lot of processes that you might do over and over again for every project. Setting up a sidechain, making a reverb send, making a bus to put that sweet gross beat halftime on, and so on and so forth. Make a project with some buses, a send for your reverb, a sidechain channel already linked to, for example, the kick, and you'll move around in your project just as fast as producers do in Splice when they see another fire trap drums that slap volume 1 million. Like for real, how many generic 808 snares do you want, bro? Jesus Christ. Now this is what my template project looks like, but if there's, for example, a plugin that you use in all your productions or a way you organize your channel rack, you should make it in whatever way that suits you best. Now that you're zooming around in your DAW like never before, it's time to look at the second and arguably most important step to good workflow, organizing your stuff. Organizing your stuff means placing and labeling things in such a way that you'll be able to access them quickly at a later time. This could be anything from your sample packs and your plugins to the mixer or the playlist. When it comes to organizing your samples, the thing you probably have the most of, given that you have a million different Cymatics Mega Uber Volume 3 packs, a common organizing technique is to put everything into one sample pack, so to speak. I took all the samples I liked and put them in one sample pack and separated them in the basic ways, kicks, snares, percussion, and so on. This will probably take you quite a while to do depending on how many samples you have, but it'll be very worth it to have all your samples conveniently located in one place. Organizing your plugins could also save you time in the long run. I've seen videos of people having like 200 plugins all in one list, and to me that seems super inconvenient. Again, you can organize them however you like, but I've chosen to sort them by the company that makes them. For example, a folder for all Melda plugins, Valhalla plugins, Waves plugins, and so on. This is actually fairly easy to do in FL Studio. Just watch this quick infomercial. Organizing your projects doesn't just have to mean the external things like plugins or samples, it could also mean the actual project itself. If you're deep into another fire beat, you may look at the channel rack and playlist and go, what in the f*** is this mess? Organize your projects from the start, for example by keeping one pattern on one playlist track, you can actually lock this in if you want, 
labeling your sounds and so forth. But if you need to just focus on creating good music, you can do that first and then organize your project later to make it easier to navigate. Another thing that could help you organize your projects is to use FL's arrangements tool. You can divide the playlist into multiple arrangements, separating them by, for example, a sandbox arrangement where you try out a bunch of stuff, and a master arrangement where only things that are actually going to be in the song are placed. You can arrange the channel rack in the same-ish way by putting sounds into groups. You can make one for basses, pads, drums, or whatever, but it could make it easier to work in that keeping everything in one place. And the final tip I have for organization revolves around the mixer, where I like to color in sounds based on their group. This is fairly common among Pro Tools Andes, where they always color their instruments based on their group. Goddamn pretentious Pro Tools Andes. For me, I like to color the sounds into drums, melodic elements, and FX. That way, it'll be a lot easier to find a random percussion sound when I know it's going to be in the drum group, and I don't have to spend too much time organizing since the categories are fairly broad. Now that we've looked at the two biggest steps in being able to navigate your DAWM projects quicker, it's time to talk about some more slightly abstract concepts that could help your workflow. Let's talk productivity. Productivity essentially means how much you get done in the time you work. Spending an hour laying down a solid foundation for your next beat would, for example, be more productive than uh, trying to find that one snare sample that's way deep in your sample library somewhere. There's so many different tips and techniques you can use to improve your productivity generally, but I'm going to highlight the ones that I've found the most use for as a music producer. Hopefully, these could help you in your quest in becoming the next Kenny Beats. Or Dave Pensato, I don't know. The first tip for me is going to be figuring out what you want to do before doing it. Before opening your DAW, have an idea of what it is you want to accomplish. Do you want to start a new track, and in that case, what type of track do you want to make? Or do you want to fix the track that you're already working on, and in that case, what is it specifically that you want to fix? Thinking about these things ahead of time means that when you open up your DAW or work, you'll get straight to work as opposed to just messing around, which is not guaranteed to bring you any useful results. Now, we are creatives at the end of the day, so there's nothing wrong with messing around and trying new stuff, but if you want to increase your productive output, you should always work with a purpose. Even just saying to yourself, okay, now I want to mess around and create some smooth R&B for the next hour is so much better than just doing stuff for no reason, in my opinion. So now that you're thinking about what to do, you might find yourself getting a lot of thoughts on what to do. If only there was a way to get these thoughts out of your head and registered somewhere before you forget them. Hmm. Hand in hand with thinking about stuff is to write everything down. My memory is pretty terrible, so for me, it's much more practical to write stuff down, whether that would be about what I want to do generally or specific thoughts about that dank deep house bass. If we're thinking about productivity, I tend to either write down what I have left to do in a track or specific ideas for a sound or vibe. This way, when I open a big messy, <clears throat> I mean neatly organized project, I'll just go to my notes and get started on something straight away. In FL Studio, you can use F11 and write stuff in the comments section. That way it'll pop up every time you open the project. The other way I use notes is to jot down what I want to do from day to day. On a random Thursday, write down what you want to do the following day, whether that be small tasks, big tasks, musical, or ad hoc. This will have the same effect in that you'll spend less time wondering and worrying, and you'll be able to get down to business straight away. Okay, so now you're writing down everything you want to do for the track. Song, make a banger. Hmm. Another thing that could help your productivity is to separate each project into smaller tasks to give more focus and care to each task. In a song, this could be general stuff like make a verse, work on the drop, or create artwork, or could go more specific and write stuff like add layers to the baseline, spice up the chord progression, or fix the EQ on that snare. God, that snare sounds like hot garbage right now, bro. Divide your project into tasks and you'll be able to work much more efficiently, in my opinion. And here's an example of a to-do list from a song I'm releasing soon. Okay, you're thinking about what to do, you're writing stuff down, and you're dividing up your day into smaller tasks. But what if one of those tasks is to make the drop for that song, and you're just like not in the mood, you know? Like I'm tired, and the thought of making music right now... Uh, I tend to divide most of the tasks I do into creative tasks, making some hot fire, and mechanical tasks, more ad hoc type things like organizing your projects and whatnot.
Increasing your productivity in my mind can also mean understanding where you're at mentally and what type of work you're most in the mood for. That's not to say that when the going gets tough, this guy gets going. Later, dudes. But when you're in charge of your day, it'll probably be more efficient to do the tasks that your energy is most suited for at that moment. For example, if I've had a long day, my mind is all over the place and my energy is just not totally there, I find that boring, easy, mechanical tasks like coloring my mixer, organizing a project, or just writing down what I want to do the next day is something that works a lot better for me at that moment than thought-intensive creative things. Conversely, if I'm really in the mood to open up the studio and make some absolute bangers, then it probably wouldn't be best to update the terms and service on my website. Oh, God. Okay, so you're doing all of the previous stuff, but you find that once you get started, you get tired fairly quickly or you get distracted easily. One very common tip to increasing productivity is to eliminate distractions like phones, internet, and whatnot, but I don't actually do that personally. Maybe I'm weak. So I'm gonna focus more on the thing that I actually do, taking frequent breaks. I, I swear I'm not lazy, I swear I do work, like, I, I swear, I promise. Imagine you're sitting down in front of your computer and you say, okay, for the next three hours, I'm only gonna work on music. Like, I'm not gonna do anything else. I'm just gonna make bangers for the next three hours straight. Are you sure about that? Now imagine you say, okay, for the next 20 minutes, I'm gonna work on spicing up the verse section for this song, and then I'm gonna take a five minute break. And so on and so forth. This is called a Pomodoro set, by the way. You might think that going for the second option means you're lazy or not willing to put in the effort, but for me, it's a lot easier to work hard and avoid things like exhaustion or burnout if you divide your time. Humans can't hold their concentration for very long, so it'll definitely be more efficient if you work concentrated for a limited amount of time and then do something else or take a break for a short amount of time. And even though you probably have to spend way more time in the studio if you wanna quote unquote make it, rest is so important for the mind. Don't exhaust yourself. Divide your time and or take frequent short breaks so you can concentrate on tasks without killing yourself. And those are the main points for me when it comes to improving your workflow. There are gonna be specific tips for navigating your DAW that you can easily find on YouTube as well, but hopefully this general overview will have been useful to you in some way. So in summary, it's been a long video by my standards, here are all the tips that I've mentioned today. Learn keyboard shortcuts. Make a template project. Do what you're most in the mood for, if possible, and take frequent breaks. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you around. Okay, now go away, please.